Good morning again, grade 10s. Uh, now, I'm just going to explain this drawing we've put on the Google Classroom. And a step-by-step -step explanation was given to you in PDF format so that you can understand what is happening. So, for those of you that has already worked through this drawing, maybe when I go through this and explain it, you will understand this a little bit better. So, to save me a little bit of time, I've already um, prepared the drawing so that we can place the views. But the most important thing that I've got to do with every single drawing that I get is I need to read the question first. So here we go. The given, the front view and top view of a center block is drawn in third angle orthographic projection. Draw the following views of the um, center block. The top view, the sectional front view on cutting plane AA, and the sectional right view on cutting plane BB. Okay, so what we need to do now is, obviously we've got to plan the drawing. Like we have just said in the previous lesson, my front view will be here. My top view will be above my front view, and my right view will be on the right of my uh, front view. So if you just quickly look at the measurements, it is 80 millimeters for the length. So if I take the distance from there to there, that will be 80 millimeters. The height of that drawing is the 25 plus 8, which is 33 millimeters. Then the height, oh, sorry, the distance in the top view is 50. And obviously, that 50 will then be drawn here as well. So, the first thing that we need to do is we need to draw the view where the cutting plane is situated. Because that view will not be affected by the cutting plane at all. It will be drawn as normal. So, I have prepared that already just to save a little bit of time. So, I have now drawn that top view already. So from there, I must now draw the rest. The important thing that I've got to say here now is, when we cut through an object, we only draw the objects that are lying on the cutting plane. All the features in front or behind it, we are not going to draw. I will say there are some exceptions, but I will come back to that a bit later when I finish the drawing off. So I now want to draw everything that lies on the cutting plane. So if I look at this cutting plane here, it cuts through this surface here. So if you can see there, there's two circular surfaces. The bigger circle of the two goes nine deep, and the other circle goes um, the rest of the 33. So that will be, what, 24 millimeters down. So if I then project those lines down, I just need to make sure that I'm on the right layers here. So if I take this line down, project it all the way down. And I take the other circle. Remember I said that one goes 9 millimeters down. And then I'm going to project that one down as well. So immediately, that will be on my cutting plane. Because it is on my cutting plane, I can immediately make that feature dark. So I can make those features dark. Now I've solved that problem there. If I now look at the rest of this front view, it is the outside of that cylindrical shape, this one here, that I now have to draw. So from there, I am going to project this line down from there. And again, now remember, it's only 25 millimeters down. And then it goes to the side. The same on the other side. 25 millimeters down and to the side. So I can now finish that as well. And make it solid. There we go. Oh, 
Okay. To finish that part is I need to draw that top part. Now this one here, a lot of people make mistakes. You must just think about, if you think about a toilet roll. And you cut through the toilet roll and you're sitting with a half left. And you look at that half. You can still see the semicircle at the back. A lot of people don't draw that line. They leave that line out. And that is the mistake they make. So remember to put that line in there. If there's a gap behind, different story. Then that line will not be there. Okay. Now the last one that we can see in this front view that we need to draw are these two ribs. Now these ribs, to project them down, is pretty straightforward. I can just go from there to there, from there to there. And they go to the top. Now, the reason why I've drawn these ribs last is what i got to remember. And that's now something you need to read through this chapter. And you will see that ribs do not get cut. When I cut through the shape of the rib and the shape does not change, I actually don't cut the rib. So to finish this front view, I then put those two lines in for the ribs and then the hatching for me it's nice to do on the computer because I can just put a hatching pattern in and I don't need to worry about uh, the spacing because the computer does all of that for me what you need to do is you need to use your 45 degree set square and make sure that your hatching is equally spaced okay so that is now the view done. But I must now remember, in mechanical drawings, all center lines must be shown. If the feature lies behind the cutting plane, I need to show that center line as well. So first off, this center line here is shown because it is the center of the circle. And if I look at these two features, it is in front and behind the cutting plane. That means I still have to draw this center line there. Although that feature is not on my cutting plane, I still need to draw that. I'm just uh, extending this quickly. So I can uh, make them center lines. This is the nice thing about AutoCAD. So if ever you got a chance to do a course, please do so. So these lines now become center lines. And my front view is almost complete. The reason why I say that is this front view will not look like that by itself. It has been cut by a cutting plane. I just need to show you there's the center lines properly shown. So I can see the center lines. And if you look very carefully, the center line is a long, short, long line. It doesn't start with a short line. It doesn't stop with a short line. Okay. Coming back to the view. I need to label this view now. Although it is the front view, it's a sectional front view. And it's a sectional front view because of that cutting plane. So again, quick cheat here on AutoCAD is always nice. I need to label this view. This view is this because of the cutting plane. So I need to label it section on a A. Okay, and that you don't just draw or write freehand. You draw your three millimeter guidelines and you then label the cutting plane. Okay, thereafter we now need to do the sectional right view as you can see. In this case, other than the drawings in your textbook, we don't give you a clue of what you need to do. So again, if you listen properly to what I said, the cutting plane is there. With the cutting plane in there, all I'm cutting through again is this cylindrical object in the middle. And this time around, there are no ribs. So to do my construction lines for that cylindrical object... I can do that first. And again, remember that only goes 25 millimeters down. The hole. Let 
There we go with the projection. And that's why it's called orthographic projection. Because I only need to measure objects once. And from there, I need to then use, make use of projection. Okay, this one is from here, 9 millimeters down and across. Again, like before, I can now draw the information in dark. So I just want to finish all of the lines. Oopsie, that one is not long enough. So again, I can now make these lines dark. I, nope. Okay, so again, this is then the inside of this center block. And I still need to draw these lines here. Okay, I need to make those lines dark. Okay, remember what we then said. After that, we can now put in the hatching. The hatching will be on that surface and that surface. And maybe I forgot to say to you in this instance, remember that that is a hollow surface. With that is a hollow surface, there's going to be no hatching. Okay, anything that is hollow, I will not be hatching. And again, I now need to put in after that my center lines. So again, yeah, there's a center line that I need to put in here. Yeah? And there's a center line that I need to put in there. Okay, I'm just going to delete these projection lines so I can show you the um, center lines a bit better. Okay, and now we need to make sure that they are center lines. And if you now listen properly, you will know that we need to now label that sectional view. And in this case, the sectional view is called section on BB because of the cutting plane. Okay, now, very important. If we look at the arrow, remember to draw the front view, I am looking from this direction. Therefore, that is why the arrow is coming from this side. And you won't believe how many people make a mess of that. There are matric questions where you get three to four marks just for entering that and people get that wrong. Okay, the drawing is almost complete. The last thing that needs to happen then is I need to give this drawing a title and a scale as well as a projection symbol. So, if you look in your textbook, I'm sure it's about page 4 or 6, you need to draw your title strip. And in mechanical, the title strip is next to your name block. So, if it's next to your name block, you draw a 75 by 18 height. And I can at least go and uh, again cheat a little bit to put the text in. Middle center. And we did say this is a guide. Wait. Uh, guide block and the scale is 1 is to 1. Okay, and now the last thing. Let's just quickly talk about um, the projection symbol. The projection symbol, if you think about a wine bottle, the cork that comes out, um, you're going to have two circles. Okay, the two circles are there, and you are going to draw the left view of it. Is it the right view? Now, I have forgotten. Okay, for third angle, we are going to draw the right view of it. So, if I'm going to draw the right view of it, this distance here, and the sizes of that will be in your textbook. Um... 
that will be 20 and that will be then the length of it and as you can see I've just now quickly I have forgotten which one is which one but this is the third angle of the graphic projection symbol so what you need to do is there is the symbol and like I've just said the circles are always the front view of it so if I look at this projection symbol here in this case um, let me just extend the line so that it looks better Delta 3 that way that way that way that way that way and that way let me just change the scale of these lines to 0.5 there we go so what I was trying to say in first oh, sorry third angle we've just finished that is my front view this part of the cork if I can make you think of a cork this is always the right view okay so in third angle this part of the symbol is on the right and if I then do the first angle one is that one will be that side. So this will be third angle orthographic projection and this will be first angle orthographic projection. So then I need to put the symbol wherever I can put that. There's the symbol and maybe I must just make it a bit darker. Okay, and that completes the drawing. Okay, um, please look at the at D6 and at the Google Classroom. We have given you some of the drawings that you need to do. Hopefully this explanation makes it a bit clearer.